Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to uh, conduct a k-means clustering analysis with Python. So we're not going to go over the theoretical background of k-means and how you set the different clusters and the centroids and all that, just the analysis for it. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to be, of course, inside Jupyter Notebook like always. And at the top right here, you can see the various <clears throat> modules we're going to be using. Pandas, PyDataset, that's where our data comes from. Uh, SKLearn cluster, that's where we get k-means from. We're going to calculate some distances here. That'll be important in a second. NumPy, and of course, we're going to be making some plots. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to, of course, get our data set going. And so we're going to be using the SAT.ACT data set from Pi data set, uh, the module. So we're also going to drop any uh, NAs. Of course, I saw some before I made the video, so we skipped that part to save time. And we're going, to take a, we're going to take a quick peek at the top of it. So you can see here we got six variables. Oh, actually, technically seven. We've got an ID number off, off to the left, and gender, education, age, ACT score, SAT, verbal score, SAT, quantitative score. That's what it is. Now. In case you're not familiar, k-means is a type of unsupervised learning. In other words, we don't really have a dependent variable for doing an analysis. The purpose of unsupervised learning is to try to group things in different groups based on some sort of characteristics. So what's happening here is we're going to be using these variables up here, primarily education through SATQ, um, SATQ, yeah, so that we can uh, try to, to group them into various groups based on the characteristics. Again, the mathematics behind k-means is not going to be talked about, but we're going to be using these, what we can con consider to be uh, continuous variables for that purpose. So right here, we have to figure out, well, how many clusters do we make? You know, in mathematics, k means a, a number, but we don't, you know, it could be any number, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And so one way to determine how many uh, clusters to, to use is through something called the elbow method. And so again, we're really not gonna be going into heavy mathematics here, but with the elbow method, what happens is that an analysis is ran, you know, using several different size, different numbers of K, different numbers of clusters, and you're looking at the sum of squares, how that changes and goes down. When it stops going down at, at a significant amount, that's where the elbow is at. Again, this is not gonna make sense until you see it, so let's first get some code going here. So right here, I know this is long and complicated, but this is kind of one of those, you know, trust me type situations. We're making a, basically a, an empty dictionary, I guess you can call it, called distortions. And we're going to have a K in line two with a range from one to 10. So even though that looks like it's 10 numbers, we're actually going to make nine clusters, uh, up to nine clusters. So then we have our for loop here, little K inside K. We have a K means model here. We're using this particular function right here for clusters of K. It's going to run every single time and it's going to calculate these, these differences here using Euclidean distance. Again, this is beyond the scope of the video, otherwise the video would be 45 minutes. But we're gonna calculate these distortions or these differences here, if you will, and uh, as we go along. And so the, this is uh, the cumulative distance function right here, the C dist, we loaded that up at the, in the top, at the top in the first cell. And so again, it's really hard to explain this in you know five or 10 minutes. And just so you can see what's going on, we're going to print it right here. So here's the output. And you can see that probably the first time we had one cluster. So you can see that you know the amount of error was very, very large. Then we had two clusters. You can see it went down a lot. Then over here to three. Then we go to four, et cetera. That's what's happening here. And of course, since it's very hard to appreciate numbers, I'm going to make a visual for you in the next cell. So what you're gonna see now is the same thing here, but using a plot. So, so here's the plot right here. This is nothing fancy, just a you know, matplotlib, if you will. I put in a title, and all we're doing is just plotting these, uh, these uh, distortions here. So here we go. So this is the elbow plot. And so again, it looks like about right here at the third cluster, is when we really start to see a uh, uh, the decline starts to, to level off. The slopeness kind of decreases, if you will. 
there's a very high drop from here to here, another high drop from here, but then around three or four, it starts to slow down a little bit. Now, again, you know, some people might say that it should be four clusters, but for our purposes, we are going to use three clusters. That is what we are going to use. Again, this is kind of subjective at times. So now that we know that we need three clusters because that's where we start to lose um, the decline in you know, reducing the error, if you will, we're going to go ahead and set that up. And so we're just going to come here and we're going to actually start setting up our model. So here we go. So this is where we're going to call our actual k-mean function to do its business. So we're gonna call it km, that's the name of our object. And you can see right here three, that means we're gonna make three clusters. This right here is the initial initialization. You, this is what you put, you can check the website. And the random state right here, this is the seed number, if you will, if you're familiar more with R. And so this allows you to reproduce the results that you're seeing right now. And so once we have the actual initia initialization of the, the actual model here, then we're going to fit it with the values from our data frame. That's what we're gonna do here, okay? So let's see here. We're gonna go ahead and press Control Enter. And you can see that we have it right there. Now, next we're gonna look at some descriptive statistics, but there's a few things we gotta do first. And we need to go ahead and paste this and I'll explain. So this is what we're doing. We're going to create a new, a new um, column in our data frame called predict. And in that we're going to predict with the values here from up here, right here. So we're gonna put these right inside here. And then I'm gonna show you a picture of what they look like. So if you look closely, we now have a new column to the far right and that's called predict. So remember, we created three clusters. So Python starts at zero, it's, I think it's like zero base. So you go zero, one, and two, that's three. So now you can see that we have this new column off to the far right called predict. That is the cluster that a particular person has been placed in. Okay, that's how that works. And so now that we have everybody inside a cluster, we can start doing some descriptive statistics and breaking things down by various categorical variables. So that's complicated, but let's just run with this. So here's what we're doing. We're using the, uh, the, D, the group by method or function here, and we're gonna group by predict, and we're gonna look at the ACT score, the age, the SAT verbal score, the SAT math score or quantitative score, and their education. And we're using the print function so that they all print, basically. So here we go. You can see right here the numbers, so the average score on the ACT score for each group, 27, 31, 23. The average age, so they're all about the same age. The average verbal score, you can see group one seems to do really well compared to the others. And then uh, the quantitative score right here, again, group one really excels. And then for education, they all have about the same level of education. Now, of course, people don't really like numbers like that. So we're going to make a nice visualization for you. So here we go. So here's the first visual visualization for ACT score. So you can see that. And all I have to do here is, this is not a visualization uh, video, this is more about k-means. But what we're doing here is we're just taking the group by, this is straight from the code above, like no change at all. And we just add this dot plot to it, kind equals bar, and then the colors for the three clusters here, black, red, and green. So if I wanna look at another one to save time, I just change the variable right here. Control enter, you can see their ages right there. I can change to SATV, you can see the SAT scores right there for verbal. Change again, this is the math scores right here. And so I just changed that one little piece of code and I don't have to copy paste over and over again. Okay, now we need to look at things by gender. And so first we'll just look at the raw numbers, then I'll give you an, a visualization. So. Over here to the left, we have the different clusters, zero, one, and two. We haven't given these different clusters names yet. That's the qualitative part that you have to interpret. Now, off to the left, you have the, the, the predict columns. And then above, you have the gender column. I believe one is male and two is female. So you can see how many members in each group. However, like I already said, people generally don't like numbers like that. They prefer visualizations. So we're gonna use a visualization here. 
And so what we're going to do now is we're going to use, we've already been using it actually, cross tab. So if you look up here, I use the cross tab to with predict and gender. And so now I'm going to rerun that and of course make a bar plot now. So I press control enter. And now a visual is much easier to see. You can see that generally there's more females than men in each category. So there must be probably more women in the sample size altogether. Now we can repeat this process for education. And you can see the different levels of education right here using cross tabs again. And now I just make a quick bar plot of what you could just saw here. And we'll just about be done with the descriptives. All right, so there we go. So you can see right there, most people have an education of, you know, level three. Um, again, you can look up the details behind what that stands for. And also in this particular instance, we're treating education like a categorical variable rather than continuous. That's what's happening right here. Now, we're going to finally visualize our clusters. And so what we did is, because I've already looked at the data, is we're going to categorize things as a uh, weak, average, and strong. That's how I decided to do it. And it'll make more sense as you see what's going on. And so what we're doing here is that with this cluster map object here, for everything that is a, a group two, we're gonna call those people weak. This just helps us in, with interpretation. For everybody who's a zero, we're gonna call it average. And for everyone who's strong, we're gonna call it one. So the actual numbers don't have any meaning to them. We're, we are describing them with the words. Okay, so it's not like Python put all the weak people in zero. No, Python just randomly gave the, that group zero. It doesn't mean anything for Python. Now, after we do that, we're going to create a new column in our data set called PERF, short for performance. And we're gonna just map that. And then we'll just take a look at this, df.head, take a quick look at it. All right, so you can see off to the far right. Again, we now have another column here. This is just taking our, recoding our numeric value two here as weak, all right? That makes more sense when we start plotting things. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on down. Now we have to give each of our little friends here a color. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to tell them apart when we make the plot. So weak is gonna be called green, and average is gonna be colored yellow, and strong is gonna be colored red. The colors don't matter, but just so you can see it, that's what, that's what we did. And so then, just so you can see this, we're gonna put it underneath, control enter, and now we made like our little, you know, code for this. This will make sense when you see the visualization. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> now the code for the visualization is rather complicated. So I'm hoping you have a background in visualizations, but this is kind of what's going on here. So we make our figure and our axes. We use the plot dot subplots for that. In line two, we make our uh, we start our for loop, so for clus in clus underscore map, you know, all these things, clus comes from way up here. So we're talking about the weak, strong, average, etc. Okay, dot values there, and then we're gonna use the color, decolor. We made the decolor object right here with the weak being green, the average being yellow, etc. And then when performance equals cluster, so when they're the same, plot the following, scatter, and we're using SAT score verbal and S SAT score math right now for the output. So press control enter, and you can see right there that we got a pretty good division going on right there between the three different groups. And so I can always change what I have here. So instead of SAT verbal, I can put age. And you can see there, even there, there's a pretty good separation you can see, but it's strongest when you're using SAT verbal and SAT uh, math or quantitative. So that's pretty much how this works. And so that is um, pretty much how um, we would map this. And so you can see the, the power of what you can do with K-means clustering inside uh, Python. And uh, this is a great way to get some insights into your data because you separate them in the clusters and then you can examine the group, the group characteristics of each cluster and it gives you insights. So it's very, very common for like, you know, market seg segmentation and, and other contexts like that. So let me go ahead and review what we talked about and then we will conclude this video. So in this video, we did a brief and quick K-means analysis. We went through the process of preparing our data, dropping the NAs, if there were any, 
uh, we took a quick peek at the actual data set. Then first we had to figure out, well, how many actual uh, clusters do I need? And so we used the elbow method for that, where we're just looking at the sum of squares distance. Of course, the Euclidean was the, was the metric there for that. This code is rather complicated. You know, it takes you a while to kind of figure out how it works, but it, trust me, it does. And once we did that, we were able to determine we needed three clusters. And so from there, we actually did our analysis and we started getting some descriptive statistics right here. So this is like, you know, the, the actual uh, aggregated data right here. And then we also made some uh, brief visualizations because this is much easier for people to digest. And then we did it also by categorical data as well. And then finally, we plotted our different uh, visualizations down here at the bottom. After we did a little bit of mapping so that everything would line up perfectly. So you can see how this is you know, really, really a great tool. And I want to thank you as well for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. You take care.